let's understand the principles of pattern making. Wrap a cylinder tightly with cloth. And cut the other side. You will have front and back patterns of the cylinder. You can make patterns by putting cloth on a cylinder. You can also make patterns by measuring the cylinder size. And drawing it on paper. If you wrap a piece of fabric on your body and cut it into your body shape, you can have a pattern that fits on your body. And if you cut the back in the same way, it will look like these. It is not easy to wrap on someone's body and cut it into the exact shape of the body. For that reason, we measure the body and draft patterns on paper. Let's learn how to measure a body to draft dart-free patterns for making dartless tops. Bust size. Measure the round of the breast passing through the bust points horizontally without too much pulling it. Upper chest, measure the chest just under armpit horizontally without too much pulling the tape measure. Waist size, measure horizontally the waist round of the thinnest part. Hip size, measure horizontally the hip round of the largest part. Shoulder width, measure from one shoulder tip to the other end passing through the back point of the neck. If you wear a well-fitting shirt and measure it, it's easy to find shoulder end points and neck back point. If you find wrong shoulder tips, you will have wrong armhole line. Back length, measure the length of the straight line from the back of the neck to the back center of the waistline. Hip length, measure the length of the straight line from the back waistline to the back center of the hip line. Arm length, measure the length from the shoulder tip to the wrist passing the elbow. You can make a dart-free pattern by measuring the round of four parts and the length of four parts. Let's take a look at the sequence of pattern drafting. You can see the order of making patterns in detail in the more below. There are patterns of measuring the size of the neck and arm, chest width, back width, and so on. If you measure many parts of the body, you can make it more accurately. But this time we will learn how to draft a dartless pattern that measures less parts and fits well. The larger the torso, the bigger the neck and arm size. So, if you know the proportional thickness of the neck and arm size depend on the chest size, you can get the neck and arm size only by measuring the chest size. However, people who are overweight, have a big bust, or have a unique body shape need to be modified after making the pattern. It is convenient to calculate the necessary dimensions of the chest, bust, hip measurement in advance. Let's make a pattern by applying your own measurements to every formula. Draft the back bodice first. Draws the right angle long enough. The armhole depth is the depth of the circumference of the sleeve. The calculation method is C divided by 4 minus 1. Example measurement have in chest 85, so 85 divided by 4 minus 1 is equal to 20.3 cm. Draw a line at right angles from 20.3. Draw a line at a right angle at 19 cm from the back length. Connect the two points. Draw a line at right angles at C divided by 6 plus 3. Mark at a point C divided by 12. Draw a right angle line up of C divided by 12 divided by 3. Mark a point of 14 cm parallel to the below line. Mark a point 4 cm below at right angles. Connect the two points. It's the back shoulder line. Connect the natural small curve of the S mode ruler to the second points in the divided 3. It's the back neck round. Mark a point at the center from the back shoulder to the arm hole depth. Connect the B divided by 4 point with the 1 cm drop from the center point. Find the center point. Draw a right angle line. Mark a point on the center of the line. Draw a natural curve where the three points meet by gradually moving up and down the large curve of S mode. Fix the width of the shoulder, example 19 cm, to the back of the neck and move the ruler to mark where it meets on the shoulder line. Draw a natural curve that connects with the curve below to the marked point on the shoulder line. Draw the front pattern to be symmetrical to the back pattern. Connect the sides of the chest and hip lines. Draw a line at right angles at point C divided by 6 plus 2.5. 
Draw a line at right angles at C divided by 12. Draw a line at right angles at point C divided by 12 plus 1. Create a rectangle. Mark at the point 14 cm, draw 5 cm down at right angles. Draw the shoulder line that passes 5 cm down point. Measure the length of the back shoulder. Mark the same length as the back shoulder length on the front shoulder. Divide it into three equal parts. Connect with the second point. Draw a right angle facing the corner against the diagonal line. Find the center point. Mark 1 cm inside point. Draw a curved line that meets the three points with the large round part of the S-mode ruler. Connect naturally to the shoulder end point marked, with a gentle curve. Draw a diagonal line. Divide it into three equal parts. Mark 0.3 cm below the second point. Mark inside 0.5 cm, draw a curve where three points meet. Extend 2 cm down. Mark a point 0.5 cm above. Connect the two points to a natural curve. Draw at right angles at the beginning. Connect it in a smooth curve from the side line to a point of 6 to 7 cm. Draw the beginning of the side line at right angles. It's complete of dartless torso. If you make a shirt with this basic pattern, it's going to be about this size. After drafting the basic bodice of your size, you need to design how much you want to stretch for the neckline band, whether to tighten the waistline or loosen the fit, whether to shorten or add the length. Draft the sleeves after you design them. Let's make the first top without making a big change to make sure that the size of the pattern you made fits well. The basic neck round is the size when the shirt collar has buttoned, so when making a t-shirt, extend the neck size. Draw a natural curve with the shoulder line and center line lowered by 1 cm from the base line as like base neckline shape extended. Draw a natural curve with 1 cm lowered shoulder line and 0.5 cm lowered back center line from the base line as like base neckline extended. Draw 1.5 cm thick ribbing. The front neckline curve symmetrically on the other side to see if the neckline curve is natural. Draw a curve close to the straight line from the side line to the point of 1.5 cm inside. Draw a natural convex curve like a side hip shape. Smooth out the angled parts naturally. Draw the bottom line of the front and back pattern by extending 3 cm in the same shape. Let's learn how to draw sleeves. Measure the arm hole with a tape measure to draft the sleeve pattern. Put the tape measure on the side and measure it. A, H is an acronym for armhole. A, H is front armhole measurement plus back armhole measurement. Sleeve cap height is front armhole measurement plus back armhole measurement and divide by 4. Fix the back sleeve measurement at the sleeve cap height and move the ruler for finding 0. The front armhole needs to draw a little bit short. Draw the horizontal line with the line below. Mark on both sides the length of the front and back armhole length divided by 8. Mark inside the length of the front and back arm hole divided by 12. Mark inside the length of the front and back arm hole divided by 8. Connect the two points marked above and below. Divide each of the four parts into two. Connect the divided points above and below. Mark the length of half divided on the diagonal. Use the large round part of the S-mode ruler to find the points where the three points meet naturally. In the same way, flip the ruler and draw the curve of the sleeve. Draw a rectangle down to arm length. Mark the length of the wrist by adding 5 to 10 centimeters, depending on your design. Divide the remaining portion into two halves. Connect the tip of the sleeve cap to the center point of the divided half with a gentle curve. Move the remaining portion to the other side and draw a symmetrical smooth curve. Draw a gentle curve with the rear sleeve center convex downward. It's completed the dartless bodice pattern and the sleeve pattern.
let's take a brief look at the procedure of cutting the pattern and cutting and sewing the fabric. It has cut the fabric with the seam allowances. The theory of the pattern and the sewing process were briefly reviewed. If the t-shirt made of basic bodice pattern fits like this, how does it make this loose fit pattern? Let's learn how to make loose fit patterns. If you make clothes with the basic pattern drawn in your size, it will be this much fit. To make this oversized clothes, you can transform the basic pattern. On the basic pattern, draw a vertical line about the center of the shoulder line and the center of the armhole and then, Cut and spread about 1 cm align the shoulder line. Spread the armhole line about 3 cm, spread out about 3 cm of the lower parts as well. Adjust the base line naturally. You can naturally connect the spread parts on the paper. It becomes a loose fit pattern that increased the shoulder by 1 cm and increased the torso by 3 cm. This is the theory of making loose clothing, but let's see how to stretch it in an easy way. After drawing the basic pattern, extend the side line by 3 cm, mark 1 cm outside the shoulder line and 3 cm below the side line. Place the S-mode ruler as close as possible to the shape of the armhole curve and mark the point 1 cm inside the armpit on the ruler. Adjust the marked point of the ruler inside 1 cm from the 3 cm down. Tilt the ruler to the shoulder point. If the ruler is tilted and dug more round than horizontal. Naturally correct it horizontally and lower the back panel as much as the amount that went down. Transform the back pattern in the same way. However, the back pattern does not go 1 cm inside. It is almost same shapes. There is no fixed amount to expand. You can expand it like this. Beginners don't know how much to expand for the loose fit as you want. So let's make a t-shirt at first by expanding the shoulders and hem by 1 cm and expanding the sides and armholes by 3 cm. You can make a slightly loose fit t-shirt by expanding the side and armhole lines by 2 cm. If you expand the side and armhole lines by 3 to 4 cm, you can make a loose sweatshirt, and if you increase it by 5 cm or more, you can make an oversized loose fit. You can make a large armhole clothes by lowering more armhole lines and expanding the side lines less. You can try various designs by expanding the side line less or expanding more. Lowering the armhole line less or lowering more. Lowering the hem less, or lowering it a lot. But if you expand the shoulders more than 2 cm, the shoulders will be angled outside of shoulders, and the clothes will be awkward. We will learn how to create a design that naturally goes down the shoulder line in next time. What is the difference between the two sleeves? It is the sleeve cap height difference. It is easier to move the less angled sleeves and shoulders. Angled sleeves are less active. Sleeve cap height armhole divided by 4 makes comfortable clothes with a wide sleeve width and a low sleeve cap. Sleeve cap height armhole divided by 3 makes a narrow sleeve width and a high sleeve cap, so, it's for making formal clothes that fit tight. It can adjust the sleeve cap height and the sleeve width with armhole divided by 4 minus 1, or, armhole divided by 4 plus 1 to 2. Sleeve cap height armhole divided by 4 minus 1 makes lower sleeve cap and wider sleeve width. The sleeve cap height armhole divided by 4 plus 1 will be a higher sleeve cap and narrower sleeve width. Armhole divided by 4 plus 2 height will be more higher sleeve cap and more narrower sleeve width. It becomes to close to armhole divided by 3. Armhole divided by 3 minus 1 the sleeve cap height will be lower and the width will be wider. Armhole divided by 3 minus 1.5 The sleeve cap height will be more lower and the width will be more wider. It becomes to close armhole divided by 4. And then, drawing close to a straight line. Wide sleeve top. Drawing a curved line. Narrow sleeve top. 
These are examples of sleeve cap height for the clothes design. Sleeve cap height is depending on the clothes design. If you can make dartless bodice pattern, you can make t-shirts or loose fit tops. A fitted dress or suit needs a dart bodice pattern. For beginners, making a lot of clothes that use dartless patterns is good for getting used to patterns in sewing machines.